When you were growing up, who remembers being rewarded for good deeds, ranging from getting good grades in school to winning a sports game, or simply just for a birthday celebration? Like many parents, mine would take me to a family entertainment restaurant center, which were often venues that offer bowling alleys, billiard halls, arcades, laser tags, and go-karts, along with a restaurant or even a bar. In the 90s, Chuck E. Cheese's was my favorite place to go for arcade games and every kid's favorite food, pizza. As we get older, we realize that many of the entertainment restaurant chains have been able to keep up with times. But others have fizzled away and have been forgotten. So, today we've decided to take our top 5 videos to the fascinating world of forgotten entertainment restaurants. But before we begin, please be sure to subscribe to our channel and tap the bell icon so you don't miss out on our future videos. Now, let's get started. Number 5. Mickey's Kitchen Mickey's Kitchen was Disney's first attempt at running a chain of restaurants outside of their resorts. The two locations were paired with a Disney store and operated from April 1990 to March 1992. The first location opened at the Montclair Place Mall located in Montclair, California, along with the first Mickey's Kitchen fast food restaurant in 1990. This location was opened as an experiment, with 190 seats taking up 6,000 square feet, out of a total of 12,000 square feet for the paired location. In keeping with Disney's wholesome, kid-friendly image, Mickey's Kitchen marketed healthier options than the traditional fast food chains, which included veggie burgers, low-fat burgers, and turkey meat hot dogs. Its menu items consisted of charming product names, such as Goofy's Burger, the Supercalifragia Chicken Salad, Salads in Wonderland, Supidi Duda, Fry Shaped Like Disney Characters, Mickey's Meatless Burger, and Pinocchio's Pizza. The second location opened on May 31, 1991 at the Woodfield Mall, which is in Schaumburg, Illinois. It was 14,000 square feet when paired with the attached Disney store. In March of 1992, Disney closed the two Mickey's Kitchen locations. While the concept was well received by customers, the restaurants were only breaking even and the company wanted to focus on expanding the Disney stores to overseas locations instead. Number 4. GameWorks GameWorks opened in 1997 as a joint venture between the video game developer Sega and the film studios Universal Studios and DreamWorks. As a part of this venture, filmmaker Steven Spielberg even provided creative input. The venues were designed to maximize uniquely fun guest experiences by offering hundreds of arcade games, world-class food and beverages, bowling, billiards, and laser tag. At its peak, the chain operated 30 locations with six of them being international. In 2001, DreamWorks sold its portion to the remaining owners. And in 2004, GameWorks filed for bankruptcy. Sega invested $10 million to buy out other partners and build the chain into a dining and entertainment concept. Sega Sammy Holdings eventually managed to purchase the remaining controlling interests of the company in 2005. However, GameWorks filed for bankruptcy a second time in 2010 due to stiff competition from chains like Dave & Buster's, which resulted in the closure of nine locations. In response, parent company Sega Sammy Holdings sold the chain to the investment group HNR Capital. A year later, HNR Capital would acquire the assets of several Jillian's Billiards Clubs in California, Washington, and Virginia. By 2017, GameWorks was down to a little under 10 venues and was acquired by Umba, who in turn was taken over by Xworks Capital a year later, becoming the company's seventh owner in its history. On December 24, 2021, GameWorks announced that it would be closing all its remaining locations. Citing financial difficulties brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic, as of January 2022, 
the website is still fully operational, even though the company is defunct. Number 3. Showbiz Pizza Place Showbiz Pizza Place, often shortened to Showbiz Pizza or Showbiz, was an American family entertainment center and restaurant pizza chain founded in 1980 by Robert L. Brock and Creative Engineering Inc. CEI. The Brock Hotel Corporation owned 80% of Showbiz, while the other 20% was owned by CEI which produced the chain's animatronic show, The Rock of Fire Explosion. The Rock of Fire Explosion was an animatronic character band that featured various anthropomorphized animals, including a brown bear, a gray wolf, and a silverback gorilla. They performed medleys of classic rock, pop, and country music, as well as original compositions and comedy skits. By September 1981, there were up to 90 locations, in 1984, they even purchased the Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater, which had just filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. The two operations merged, and the newly formed company was named Showbiz Pizza Time, Inc. However, both restaurant chains continued operating as separate entities. Richard M. Frank joined the company as president and chief operating officer in 1985 and instituted several changes to appeal to younger children and parents, based on customer research. Specific measures included increased lighting, a redesigned food menu, table service, self-serve fountain drinks, a revamped ride selection, and distinct toddler areas. In 1990, Showbiz decided to end ties with CEI and began restructuring the restaurant chains. This was done by removing the Rock of Fire Explosion animatronic show from the restaurants and converting them into a new show called Chuck E. Cheese and Munch's Make Believe Band, featuring the Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time theater characters. By 1992, the conversions were complete and all showbiz pizza locations in the U.S. were rebranded as Chuck E. Cheese's. Number 2. Jillian's Jillian's was founded in 1985 as a billiards club in Boston, Massachusetts. The club was named after Jillian Foster, who is the spouse of the establishment's founder, Stephen Foster. By the 1990s, it became a competitor of Dave & Buster's, expanding its locations to include restaurants, video game arcades, bowling alleys, nightclubs, and conference rooms. By 2000, there were roughly 30 locations in the U.S. and one in Montreal, Canada. A few of the locations were in malls owned by the then Mills Corporation. In 2001, the company defaulted on a loan from Fleet National Bank. It was said by a representative of the company that Jillian's continued to operate under forbearance agreements and that it was profitable. Despite lower sales in 2001 and 2002 that made it difficult for it to get new financing. However, in 2004, Jillian's Entertainment Holdings Inc. filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy and arranged to sell its assets. Nine of Jillian's locations and Jillian's trade name were sold to Dave & Buster's. Some of these locations were eventually converted to operate under Dave & Buster's name while others were rebranded as Dave & Buster's Grand Sports Cafe. By this time, all the remaining Jillian's locations that weren't converted still accepted the Dave & Buster's player cards and tickets. In 2009, Dave & Buster's, which itself was going through the process of being sold from one venture capital firm to another, sold the name rights of Jillian's to Gemini Investors. That company later established JBC Entertainment Holdings, Inc., to operate these locations. However, most of the locations were shuttered between the years 2010 and 2014, with the last location in San Francisco converting to a tabletop tap house in 2018. Even the original location in Boston was converted into a Lucky Strike Social back in 2017. But in honor of the franchise's history, it keeps the Jillian's branding to this day. Number 1. 
ESPN Zone. ESPN Zone was a themed restaurant and entertainment chain that was founded by Art Levitt in 1998. However, the concept dates to 1992 when Levitt proposed the idea of having an ESPN experience at Disney's Pleasure Island to increase the attractions. At the time, Disney did not give the green light for it right away. So Art Levitt abandoned his plans as he left his position at Disney to become the CEO of Hard Rock Cafe International. Disney, however, revisited the plans and opened an ESPN Club sports bar at Walt Disney World in 1996 as a test concept in conjunction with Capital City's ABC. It featured 13,000 square feet worth of TV screens and drew enough attendance to prove it would be successful. By this time, Michael Eisner, who was Disney's chair CEO, revisited the project after Disney acquired Capital City's ABC which owned the ESPN Club Sports Bar at the time of the test concept and renamed it Disney Regional Entertainment. Art Levitt was brought back in to serve as president shortly after. After the purchase, Disney began construction of its first theme restaurant called ESPN Grill in October of 1997. A month later, it was renamed ESPN Zone to help brand it as more than just a restaurant. On July 10, 1998, the first location was opened in Baltimore, Maryland at the Pratt Street Power Plant on the Inner Harbor. The second location opened a year later in Chicago as a part of the North Bridge development where Disney Quest was operating. Over the next couple of years, ESPN would open additional locations in major cities like New York in September of 1999, Atlanta, Georgia in 2000, and Denver, Colorado in 2001. In total, it operated nine locations. Most of the restaurants consisted of two levels with a stadium-like design that could hold a total of 550 people. People had the option to dine at the bar or restaurant area. Over 200 TV screens were placed throughout the restaurant on both the walls and ceilings. It also featured two special rooms, which were a screening room and a 10,000 square foot arena for actual and virtual gameplay. All ESPN Zone restaurants were also equipped with remote ESPN broadcast stations, but only two were used to house regular series. The other unused stations were often leased to other stations. In 2009, Disney Regional Entertainment closed two locations in Atlanta and Denver due to the recession. A year later, in June 2010, all but two locations were shuttered, with the remaining locations being in California. Employees at the Baltimore ESPN Zone filed a class action lawsuit against Disney after their location was closed, claiming that Disney had violated the Worker Adjustment and Retraining Notification Act of 1988. Disney did in fact violate the act by failing to notify workers of the closures and underpaying them. Disney would eventually choose to settle the lawsuit in November of 2013 by paying approximately 70% of the employees' back pay. In July 2013, the Los Angeles location at the LA Live was closed, but the last ESPN zone at Downtown Disney in California managed to stay open until 2018, when it was finally shuttered. Well, that's all we have on our list for the top 5 forgotten entertainment restaurants. If you liked today's video, check out one of our other videos on screen now. And finally, if you've ever visited any of these entertainment restaurants, or have any favorites that weren't mentioned on the list, let us know in the comments below. See you next time!